So now that we got our tools set up, we can actually set up our work so we can run our program. So the very first thing you want to do is get out your probe, which is always in T10. So I'm going to, from MDI mode, I'm going to enter T10. I'm going to press ATC forward or reverse. It does not matter. So here we are, T10. I'm going to pull out the probe so we can look at it. So here's our, our probe. It's a Renishaw probe. It's a wireless unit. It communicates with the unit back on the wall. And you'll notice it has this stylus here. And this can actually move a little bit. So if you are moving really low speed into some part and it, you kind of crash into it a little bit, it's not going to be a big deal. If you're coming full blast at something, you, you hit it, it will snap right off. So be careful about that. So I'm going to put this back in. When you're inserting a tool, especially the probe back in the machine, you want to make sure you put it in the same way you got it out. They are supposed to be symmetrical, but it's always good to be safe. So before we actually probe out our block, just a quick review of jogging. So you can jog from the hand jog mode or from the IPS, but let's do a little hand jog here. So I'm going to go into hand jog mode. Remember, these keys select your jog rate. So I'm going to go to the quickest here. And select your axis you would like to jog over here. I'm going to do Y. And you can jog it using the jog handle. So I'm going negative X right now. Or you can jog by holding down the, the axis you would like to jog. So I'm going to do Y, just hold that down. A little X, a little bit of Z. So whenever you're jogging your Z, I recommend you use a slower jog rate. So maybe 10 thousandths per click. It's probably a good one to use. You got a lot of control there. So make sure you understand the jogging before you actually go to probe something, because you will need to position the probe to where it needs to be. All right, so to access our probing system, you need to hit MDI, then go to Program Conversational, and that will bring you to this screen. So currently, we're in the Tool Setup tab. We don't want that, so I'm going to cancel out of that. I'm going to scroll over to the Work tab, hit Enter. Now we're in the Work Offsets tab. So now that I'm here, the very first thing you want to do is use the cursor up or down to select the work offset you would like to use. So we have 54 through 59, as well as some extra ones for the Haas. So I want to do 54 right now, so I'll just leave it there. So now that you've selected your work offset, Press F2 to access the probing menu. So we have a lot of templates to choose from here. We can do a bore, a boss, a rectangular pocket, a rectangular block, and a web in the x-axis, a pocket web in the x-axis, a web in the y-axis, a pocket in the y-axis, outside corner, which is going to be a real common one, inside corner, and then single surface, which you will use all the time. That's a really useful one. So we're going to do a single surface. So what we need to do is jog our probe near the surface we want to measure. So I'm going to hit Z, jog my Z, change my jog rate, move the X, jog the Y. So now I'm over top of my surface. Now note that I'm jogging with the doors open and I'm jogging straight out of the IPS mode. So you don't have to toggle to, to hand jog mode to jog, which is kind of nice. So I'm going to reduce my jog rate to a thousandths per click, bring my z-axis down a little closer to my surface, maybe about a quarter inch off. So that looks good right there. Now my x and my y distance I don't need because I want my probe to stay right where it is in the x and the y axis. But the z distance is necessary to tell it where the surface is that you want to probe. So what I'm going to do here, I said I was about a quarter inch off the part. I want my probe to move in the negative direction, a quarter inch. So I'm going to enter negative 0.25. That's an incremental value from your current position. Enter, and that's all I need. I'm going to close the doors and press cycle start. So it'll plunge into the surface. And you got your z value. It's that easy. So now we can do x and y. So we're going to start with a corner. So I'm going to bring up the same menu. 
and I'm still in G54, and I'm going to do an outside corner. So according to this diagram here, we want corner two because I'm doing this corner right here. So I'm going to jog the X. All right. And the Y until my probe is approximately right over the corner I want to probe. So now I can enter my incremental values here. So the Z incremental, that's how far down do you want your probe to move to check your part. So if I put an inch in, it'll move from here down to here. So we don't need to go all that far. So I'm just going to enter negative 0.5. Now the X and the Y incremental are always going to be set at 0.5 inches when you turn on the machine. But this block is very large, so I could increase those values. So I'm just going to go to an inch and a half in both directions. So that's going to move my probe from my current position and check that corner. So I'm going to put 1.5, enter, 1.5, enter. So I've got all my parameters in here. I've got my correct corner selected, which is corner two. So I can go ahead and press cycle start. So the probe's going to move away from the part, feed down, and check each surface. So now my probe's right over my part, so I'm just going to send it home. So to do that, I'm going to hit Z, press 0 RET, and then press home. And that'll send just the Z axis to its home position. So what I did was I set up this on this, this corner on the top surface. So we learned how to do a corner. Now let's do the center of the block, which is just another template. So to do that, MDI mode, program conversational, the same screen. This time I'm going to set up a G55. So I'm going to cursor up to G55. I'm going to hit F2. I'm going to scroll over to rectangular block. And now I can go ahead and jog my probe near my part. All right, so you want it pretty close to the center, and you want your probe to be maybe a quarter inch off the surface. So my X length, I just happen to note that is six inches, so I'm going to enter six point. My Y width is four inches, so I'm going to enter four point. And my Z incremental, again, is how far I want my probe to go down from that current position. So I'm going to negative 0.75. So my X and Y adjust. I really don't need those because I'm pretty much in the center and I want my probe to move from its current position. So now I'm going to close up the doors and press cycle start. All right, so you can see the probe at the very end of that position to the actual true center of that block. So I was off by a little bit. So now we need to do that single surface. So I'm just going to press F2, go to single surface again, enter negative 0.25, and cycle start. And there I go. So it really is that quick and easy to set up work offsets on this machine. So let's do one more, and this time we're actually going to do a cylindrical stock. So we're going to use this. I'm just going to switch it out, and we'll see what that looks like. All right, so I got my cylindrical stock all chucked up in there. So now I'm going to go to MDI mode, program conversational. I'm going to select my work offset. So this time I want G59. I'm going to press F2, scroll over until I get to boss. So technically that's called a boss. So now I'm just going to do what it says, position the probe 
near the center of the part, just off the top of the top surface. Right there. A little adjustment in the X. A little adjustment in the Y, and that looks pretty good to me. So all you really need to enter here is the approximate diameter and how far down you want that probe to move to check it. So the approximate diameter of that part looks like about four inches, four point. And how far down I want that probe to check it. So I'm going to say negative 0.5. So that's all you really need for a boss. Now I can close up my doors and press cycle start. All right, so there we go. Just thought I'd point out here that the process for a bore or a cylindrical hole is pretty much the same thing. Approximate diameter, you don't need a Z incremental because you just jog the, the uh, probe to where it needs to be and it'll, it won't change in the Z axis at all. So I'm just going to send the uh, Z axis home. So Z, zero, home. There we go. So sometimes you don't want to actually use the probing system. You might want to just find a point. So say I want to probe this X right here. That's going to be pretty hard to do with using the probe. So what I can do is actually just place a tool where I want it to go and set that as my zero. So to do that, I'm going to close the doors and change to a pointed tool. So a center drill works great for that, which is T5. So I'm going to enter T5, MDI, automatic tool change. All right, so now I have my center drill in there, my pointed tool. So I'm going to open my doors, go to hand jog mode, and I'm going to jog the tip of my tool to where I want to probe. All right, in hand jog mode, go to hand jog mode, and then we can just jog our tip of our tool to where we want to set as our work offset. So I'm going to jog my Z. Y. And the X. Now I'm going to position my pointed tool. Lower my jog rate. until I get it right where I need to be. So that looks about the center of that X. So now I can hit the offset key, and that brings me to the offset page, and you scroll to the offset you would like to set. So let's do G58. And then all you do is you press part zero set. So I'm going to hit that one time, my x-axis is now set. I'm going to hit that another time. My y-axis is now set. If you hit that button a third time, it'll set the z-axis. And that does not compensate the length of that tool. So you will be off there. I recommend using the, the probing system to find your z's. So I'm just going to send my tool home now that I have that. So close up the doors. Z, zero, home. All right, so on this machine, editing the offsets is really easy. Say you, need, you probed a corner end, but you actually want to move your offset over a little bit, maybe an inch or so. So what we can do is go to the offset menu, press it again to enter the work offsets, and right here we can edit our offsets. We can enter them directly in or change them, alter them. So for right now we have our X offset, and it says negative 17 inches. The Y offset's negative about six inches, and the Z's about negative 12. So keep in mind the MRZ is gonna be up 
in this corner somewhere. So all of your offsets are always going to be negative on this machine. So if we want to alter this offset here, let's say we want to make it a little more in the positive direction. So what we can do, let's say we want to do two inches. So we can do two point, and then I can press enter, and it's going to say, do you want to accept that? You're changing it, and you say yes. So now that went from negative 17 to negative 15. So this menu is additive. Now the y-axis, I can do the same thing. I can uh, make it negative or positive. So I'm just going to do negative 2 point. And I'm going to hit yes. And that changed from negative 5.9 to negative 7.9. So you can do the same thing with the z. If you would like to replace that value with a whole new value, you can also do that. So let's just say I want to make that 15 to 17. So I'll do negative 17.5. And if I hit enter, it will add it. So for this, you have to use the function keys, F1 or F2. So I'm going to hit F1, yes, and I put that number right in there. Now keep in mind here, the function keys, F1 or F2, do a little bit different things. So let's do that same value, 17 point. Now notice I ended up positive this time. If I want to make that number negative, I'll just hit F2. And it's going to say yes, so now it's negative. So what these function keys really do is it multiplies any value you enter by a negative one or a positive one. So F1 is going to be the positive one, F2 is going to be the negative one. So it's that easy to edit your offsets. So I'm going to go to uh, MDI mode here. So now that you got your offsets set up, you got your tool set up, you're ready to go ahead and run a program.